they're worried about is the fact that if Cascadia goes, there are 18 high threat volcanoes that are ready to go with it. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else who helps at the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. Rip Curl, you are live on Marfugal TV. What's going on? Well, hello, Adam. How are you doing tonight? Doing fantastic. So, Rip Curl. I'm glad to hear that. What triggered you to call in today? Well, you know, first off, um, well, I'm calling in about uh, something that I came across of that has to do with Cascadia. And what I wanted to say first, just really quick, was is um, that something you had said earlier. I wanted to thank everybody, one, for all the well wishes whenever I'm sick. It always amazes me that whenever I'm not feeling well uh, or, or you know, have a flu or bug or it doesn't matter what, there's always people in this uh, community that we have here that are uh, – that are just right there to pick us up and help us feel better um, and giving us well wishes. And it really does work because I really did get better quickly. You know, no one likes being sick. And that's why I started here at the, uh, with the whole community is, is because how amazing is it to have 3000 people that are sitting here sharing with each other and um, helping each other share ideas and fight for a like cause. And I think there's nothing better than if we do respect each other and help each other see the real battles that need to be fought and the ones that just aren't so important to argue over and uh, respecting each other's differences while combining and coming together to a like cause. Um, but the reason I called this is because during the whole, um, you know, November 3rd thing and everybody with their theories and stuff going out, I always look for in any story, there's a lot of, say propaganda going out there and a lot of truths and not truths but in everything there's always a, a, a thread of truth something to be gained by it and what i started noticing is, is even before the november 3rd um date uh the one thing that was holding true was is there was an awful lot of um crisis drills um and they were everywhere um there were ads for crisis actors to do crisis drills with and so I started trying to figure out why. And of course, at first I was thinking, well, it must be because of the November 3rd thing. And it's another one of those things where something's always going on. But what I found was in really calling around and looking into them was that the real um, drills that they were running were had to do with um, uh, big events, Cascadia, uh, earthquake events, uh, natural disaster events. Um, uh, um, events with uh, shortages of food, uh, nat uh, pandemics, and so forth like that. And I was like, well, that doesn't sound like anything to do with. Of course, there was a drill running in the Nova in Seattle area, of course. But even it was <clears throat> kind of geared towards, part of it was towards um, a natural disaster and so forth. So it got me looking into that. And of course, we found all the old, I found the older articles where you know, Seattle PI had said that, um, you know, the older articles were Cascadia volcanoes, that they're really worried about Rainier being a silent sleeper and one of the most dangerous um, that are out there. And so it kept me looking for some, you know, newer articles. And I had come across um, some of the other ones, like the, the, the fact that while there is Yellowstone and they're worried about it going off and so forth like that that there were nine other active volcanoes that they were worried about erupting at any time and i started looking and finding even more current news about the fact that again in 2019 their warning of mount rainier could erupt and they're tying these all in each one of these articles with the key to triggering these eruptions they're they're they're, they're bringing a tie to volcanoes and the cascadia event and what they're really afraid of happening, and what you had up on the screen there, was a USGS, um, and it's a big article, but on page 16, what I found was really important about that, the whole article, and I encourage people to read that one from the USGS, is um, it's going over how they're drawing the ties to 
the Cascadia event and volcanoes that are gonna that they suspect are gonna erupt, um, and the threat assessments is what I found tying these articles together. And what got really scary to me is when you get to page 16. If you go to page 16, that's the very beginning of the top threats. Those are the ones they consider very, um, uh, very eminent. Or, or uh, let's see what I have written down here. They are the um, the very high threats, or the ones that are in the red. And out of those 18 very high threats, they're worried about is the fact that if Cascadia goes, there are 18 high threat volcanoes that are ready to go with it. And um, I think that's why there's a lot of people that are talking about this tie between they think they see vol you know, uh, uh, magma and so forth or, or lava flowing underneath California and stuff. And we don't know if that's true or not. But there is definitely geological events going on. And I believe that some of the things that we may be seeing in some of those people that are watching from the satellites, those those uh, little puffs or, or explosions they think they are, could be thermal venting that's happening as well. But obviously the G USGS thinks that there are 18 uh, you know, high threat volcanoes ready to go. And out of those, when you look at them, just to give people a quick rundown, there's Kilauea, Mount St. Helens, Rainier, Shasta, Hood, Three Sisters. Um, there's a bunch in, uh, in, in uh, uh, or a few, I should say, in, in Alaska that I can't uh, pronounce. But there's Lassen, Newberry, Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, Crater Lake, and Long Valley Caldera. So out of the 18 that there are, there's 11 out of the 18 that Holy is just moly. the west coast i yeah, i just saw just the the, the red coast. ones and this is in oregon and in washington and they're all look at the threat level the the red threat level and then yep. check it out all of them right in one line along the cascadia i'm telling yep, you this all is on the cascadia so I've focused on this. Some of the newer viewers don't uh, don't know, but I've been doing a documentary on the Cascadia subduction zone. I know I hear a lot of criticism, like "Oh, it will happen by the time you get it out." It, you guys have no idea how much digging that this thing has. Um, the idea was to spread words. I, I interviewed people. One out of ten people when I started last year. Um, did not know one one pe one person out of ten knew what it was. Two maybe two people knew what the really big one was, or they heard of the really big one, but they didn't even know what it was called. Nobody knew this was, was going to happen, even just as of like, like two years ago. A couple of articles came out, uh, including by Chris Goldfinger, who I've interviewed, um, and it's just it's like nobody nobody realizes this, but this is huge. These are all of the incredibly high risk um uh volcano is here so this is this is pretty crazy well and they're in the they're in the order according to the article of the 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 threat that they pose too and and while there's been lots of articles come out recently in fact uh just in 2019 here um which you know we'll try to put on the website i'm sure but uh uh they can find them in discord as well the uh, Mount Rainier, I mean, Mount St. Helens, Kilauea, of course, is number one because it's currently erupting and always is. But Mount St. Helens, Rainier, Shasta, I mean, this is in order from top down. Uh, Hood, these are all massive, massive uh, volcanoes. A lot of them have been stone cold quiet, too, which are considered silent killers as well. Now, if you go on to read that, and there's a couple other articles um, that I read where I found that if this was to happen and the Cascadia, and it's not an if to most people, it's a, it's a when, uh, goes off. If it was to, you know, uh, like they are thinking, trigger these volcanoes, it could then trigger Yellowstone, which is number 21. So it's just barely out of the red limit. And then Yellowstone is the one that they're afraid could trigger things like uh, the New Madrid. And what got me worried about this and why I wanted to call in about the whole it country because what ties this well, what ties this all together, right, is the fact that it's the microquakes 
and the swarms of earthquakes that have been happening in just the seven day period that I was looking into this during that November 3rd area um, before and after there were 2000 quakes in seven days. And those are what they considered quakes. So those aren't even microquakes. There were many more microquakes as well, which are what they are more like tremors. Um, they're, they're what's under, uh, I think, like a, a one. But the, the 2000 were all over that. And that was in a seven day period. And so they were finding that, you know, quite alarming um, that this is ramping up. And so what got me even more worried about that so then i go and talk to my friends and i have some friends and so forth that are in um the national guard as well as the air national guard as well as hospitals around here and every when i started looking at it right now they're all running their drills and they're all running them again and it was all at the same time our local hospital was running its drill for emergency crisis due to uh, a cascadia type event so was the Air National Guard, so was our regular National Guard, um, and all the other organizations like that. And I found that from the West Coast all the way down through California. So it, it, it looks like they're actually kind of in the same order doing preparation. So what Rip Curl is saying is, did you see my uh, interview with Chris Goldfinger, by the way? I don't know if you did. Uh, yeah. So yeah, in that interview, he's the one they based the uh, the the really big one article by the New Yorker. It went viral, and all these people around the world knew about it that never you know heard about it before. Um, this is a newer uh, the Cascadia subduction zone is something that they only really discovered about twenty years ago or less. Um, they did that from records of the tsunami that happened in the last one in the year 1700. It's been 319 years. Uh, by the math, it's happened on average every 240 years. It's like it, it's a nat, it literally happens all the time. So we built all these cities, uh, these new cities, civilized cities, because America's uh, honestly not that old, um, right on the line of this thing. And. With that, with this whole Cascadia subduction zone, Chris Goldfinger, I asked him a question that uh, is going to be drilled into my head until the day I die. I said, you know, can one big earthquake trigger another? And he told me that uh, 20 years ago, if you asked me that question and him being one of the lead seismologists in the world on the Cascadia subduction zone, I and all of my colleagues would have said, oh, no, you're crazy. But now they 100% have proof that earthquakes trigger other earthquakes. So obviously, even in just a few years ago, a lot of people pushed back on that. Even Dutch Sense said that. Dutch Sense was like, yeah, there's the antipodes or, you know, this. But it's actually uh, in their minds, yes, it can trigger the ones right next to it. So if you look at this whole line down Cascadia subduction zone, what Rip Curl is talking about is uh, the Cascadia going a full margin rip rupture. This is not like a centralized earthquake. This is the entire 700 miles from Canada down to the beginning of California completely rupturing. So the entire plate, the whole United States will shift 45 feet at once. Somebody standing in Washington and somebody standing in Seattle will both are in uh, California will both move 45 feet towards the water. Then all of that water is displaced from the ground going up. All of that water must go somewhere. We could have 100 foot waves coming to us and even higher waves going to Japan. Uh, this is insane, like what it's going to do. It is a guaranteed tsunami. It's always been a tsunami every time it happens. And then when that comes this way, this isn't science fiction, guys. There is not one scientist that disagrees with this, which in the scientific community, that is rare. And what he's saying is, say it triggers any of these, all of these volcanoes, that triggers Yellowstone, and then Yellowstone has the capability and the power to actually trigger the new Madrid. So then you're talking about the whole Earth kind of, you know, spinning on, all of the plates get shifted. And then, if you had an earthquake and something like that big, that could possibly end, that could end us. I mean, do you, do you agree? I mean, we had uh, our, the day of the, we had the time the day shortened when we had that earthquake in uh, 2004, wasn't it? 
or was that in the, the 2011? I think it was 2004. So these are big earthquakes that changed. It changed the wobble of the earth. So these are huge. Well, yeah, and the thing I was reading, too, and the reason I was bringing this up is because you're exactly right about the tsunamis. In fact, the newest report, the, 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 there was one of the 2019 reports. Uh, well, I think it was right in November here that was written about this, was saying was talking about the tsunamis also that would come because of this. And they were saying that people would have 15 minutes now, is what they're saying, to get to safety. And even at that, because they're looking at anywhere from 500 to 1,500 foot waves uh, could be generated by that. And so they are giving now like a 15 minute time. Um, a, you know, that's why they're doing a lot of their retraining because 15 minutes is really not that long. Um, when you're talking about, you know, getting in your car and getting gone and let's make sure people understand this doesn't mean trying to grab everything you need to grab. It just means grab your bag and go if that's the situation. And, and so because all these places are, are practicing for it, it really made me want to get on here and tell people especially with, you know, we all tend to get infighting and stuff like that with each other, but we really need to remind ourselves who we're all here for and that we all need to be there for each other because these kind of things are real. And if that was to happen um, and those tsunamis were to hit and stuff like that, and there is a new map and I didn't get any time to get it to Dex, but I will, and I'll come back on again. There's a new program that actually puts where you can type in your area, at least along the West Coast, and it'll tell you which zone you're in how much time you have, if the water is going to reach to you. And it's all color coded from red to, to, I think, green or blue or something like that in the same color scheme all the way to the eastern Oregon. And you can type it in all over the West Coast and it kind of gives you an idea on that. So I'll be sure to come back in with that. But I wanted now, everybody Rip, to know because if girl, they're, if did they're you... practicing, it means they're underreporting. No, I, so sorry I, about that. I, no, no, no. I, uh, somebody may may said, and I actually heard the same reason too. You said 500 to 1500 foot waves. Was right. that a, was that a, was that a, a that came straight from an article uh, from a, from a, from okay. a story that was called economic collapse. So. Okay. So here's the thing. There's been some changes recently. So we are actually uh, going to be talking to somebody. We just got something in a couple days ago, somebody who is actually, um, we, we, I don't even know if we can, I don't know if we should talk about it yet. Uh, somebody who apparently is so somebody who was also a fan of Dutch sense, send us some, sent us some information, um, kind of on a timeline type thing. One thing I will tell you and this one, I dare somebody to go ask one of the FEMA and military liaisons for FEMA. So they organize FEMA and the military. And uh, they are, you know, basically they have such a, uh, a rank where they are organizing FEMA and military. They are military first and then FEMA, they basically coordinate the response. Guarantee you, the answer will be, we thought this was going to happen two to three years ago. That is directly from a FEMA and military liaison. So... They thought this was going to happen before. Now everything's ramping up. I think that the science in it, what they're finding, is that it's going to be way worse than anybody found. And I've been saying this for two years. I said that this will change uh, what we consider a disaster. This is 20 times Katrina. This is, I, I don't even think 20 would be, this is going to, this is going to change Earth. 21 states are, do you remember that this rip curl? 21 states. Are preparing for this mm -hmm. why 21 yep. when it's supposedly only going to affect three right well exactly exactly and now they're even starting to uh i heard rumors of okay they're re-pushing the whole six months worth of stuff again well now they're starting to really push that again so why again six months worth of stuff for just three states and now they're starting to wrap it up saying at least six months and I wouldn't doubt it. And, and, and I'll say, I hate saying mark my words, but let's just see if I'm right. I'll be willing to bet that they start moving that number up from six months worth of stores and supplies or so forth like that. If you're in areas that maybe aren't initially affected, like wipeout zones, uh, into higher numbers of reserves. 
<clears throat> excuse me. By the way, so, I just I just pulled up too. Uh, Arizona, uh, their government is one hundred percent preparing for people walking from California in the possible millions. Uh, it says it, Los Angeles, CBS local, uh, there was Forbes, there's Fox, 12 News. Millions across the U.S. prepare for a major earthquake. Uh, the big one could leave uh, 400,000 quake refugees. Uh, you know, I think that's an underestimate, and so did FEMA. They actually, they said basically everything west of I-5 will be toast. Arizona preparing for California earthquake evacuees. So multiple states are actually preparing for the residents on the coast to be physically walking towards their states. This is like... Well, and that, well, that would be another great big reason why it's more than just three states or four states, say, and it uh, could say Alaska is affected or something like that. Uh, that. That's why it's a lot more than that and it's 21 states is because that's an exact good point. It, it'll be just like the refugees from other countries who are who are flooding here and flooding to other countries from war torn areas or from areas that are that are getting say overrun by cartels and things like that. It's going to be the same sort of thing. Except it's just going to be caused naturally by a natural event. So yes, the survivors aren't going to have anywhere to go, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So that's why it would be more than just four states preparing. This is something that would that would affect um, an entire country. So that's a really, really great point. Well, Rip Curl, it was uh, beautiful to have you on. Thank you for calling in with that information. I think that everybody is thankful uh, for you pulling that out. And uh, please call in again, all right? I will. I will. Thank you, sir. All right. You have a great night. God bless. If you are an avid watcher or you're not, either way, uh, I would definitely suggest that you guys check out EMP Shield. This, we believe, is going to be an issue in the future. It's it's something that, you know, a lot of us, basically, we know that they're going to try this. Uh, T-Man actually signed a bill over, I think it was May 3rd, to harden our grid. He said that we were just completely like an open door, and there are active parties planning this. So, EMP Shield is the world's first and only uh, electromagnetic pulse protection device that you can get for your home. You can get one for your car. You can get one for your ham radio. You can get one for your solar system. You can even get one for your RV, uh, for your generator. All of those different devices you can actually protect with EMP Shield. Uh, again, they are doing $75 off on uh, on uh, devices, multiple devices, if you get more than one. Uh, go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. I believe that's an a incredibly limited time offer. It protects against all phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3. <laughs> There's a full list of uh, there. If you actually go to the website, you can see all of the... Uh, I did not know they did boats. That's actually awesome. You want to know what's going on? What's really going on when it happens? Go to marfuglenews.com and get Marfugal alerts along with a Discord invitation where you can find your local state group and get together with the Fugal fam. You'll find fast friends where you'll share prep and intel, and there's even special groups for former and current military. But don't try and steal the valor of those who have really served. It won't go well for you. The Marfugal fam is waiting for you.